How's it going, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. In this video, I want to give you a quick rundown and kind of show you how I have my Faraday cage set up and what I have in it and all my electronics, you know, to keep it safe from, you know, solar flares or, you know, EMP based threats, whether that be like nuclear or other threats that are out there. So let me turn the camera around and I'll show you, you know, the setup that I'm running with. So don't mind the gear too much. This is pretty much my gear corner where everything goes and I do testing on and you know, all that kind of stuff. But this particularly is the Faraday cage. Now it's a pretty large aluminum constructed box. Originally it was meant for a fiber optic center in or a sensor in the military. Now they did away with this type of sensor and they just had the crate laying around. They did not want it anymore. And they said, we need these crates out of here by tomorrow. We don't care what happens to them. So I just said, Hey, do you mind if I take one? They said, we don't care what you do with them. So I took one, had a good idea of, you know, this is probably be worth something someday, or I could use it. So let's get in or let's get into the construction of the box real quick, how it is in my opinion, perfectly set up for what I have it. Now it is fully lined already came this way with foam, which is also a benefit. But if you look at the connection points, it has a low point on each side and then a raised point in the center. So that coincides with this is having a connection point on the left or on the outside and on the very far inside. And in between is a rubber gasket that connects with this. So why this is important for EMP is you want metal on metal connection to stop those waves from penetrating through the box, especially if there's like a small crack or something like that, it allows those waves to get in between. This being a double setup is having that exterior and the interior and the waterproof barrier at the same time really assist this. So let's push in to see what I specifically have in it. Now there's a bunch of comms gear down in here along with the specific charger, which we'll talk about the main power cable, how I run power in here, here in a second. But I'm also running some batteries, which batteries I'm not really too concerned about. They're not really a threat against like having, getting penetrated by anything. They, they're not gonna overload. There's no electronics that are really sensitive, but the chargers specifically are just like the Jackery 1000 that I have in here, which I'll pull out just to give you a good idea. It is a fully battery charger. And I have that riding in there along with my full generator. It's a Generac generator, which is under here. And it is tucked away as well because there is inverters in both, which are susceptible to that EMP basis. So behind it for the Jackery, I have yet to install it, which I'll show you really quick, but is my solar panel for it. Now, currently it's wrapped in an EMP based cloth or a stainless steel woven material that is also like a Faraday cage or a box. It's just in a fabric. You can also put these over cars, generators, electronic devices, wrap whatever you want into it. I even wrap one of my night vision rifles up in this to protect it. Let's push back inside real quick before I conclude this video. The main power cable to this particular distributor. How do I keep, you know, EMP or those electromagnetic waves from impacting this or even going through the house, through the main power lines, down inside the house, and then out through this cable inside and then destroying all my stuff? How I do that is this little device, actually there's two of them, one there and one there. This is called a ferrite. Now this is meant to regulate the amount of energy that is pushed through a cable like this. And as you can see, there is a hole right there and I cover it up with this. Normally one is only necessary, but I do have a second one down there. Now this will stop any you know, anything from penetrating through here because it'll get absorbed by this high saturation ferrite. So this entire box is safe, even though it has a hole because this is over it and it's meant to absorb it. So where I picked up at least the um, fabric and the ferrites 
is disasterprepper.com. Now, the individual who runs that also has a YouTube channel, which I will place in the description box below for you to go check it out. But he has his doctorate. I think his name is Arthur T. Bradley, and he's a doctor, has his doctorate in electromagnetic engineering. Might be a little bit different, but along the same lines. So he tests equipment just like this for electromagnetic pulses, a huge resource that he puts out over YouTube for us to really assist us in EMP-based threats. And I used a lot of his material that he has put out on YouTube to assist me in building this proper setup. So if you guys like that kind of stuff, definitely go take a look at his channel. I do not know the man at all. I've bought items off of him, but there, I've never met him. I'm just recommending his channel because it's a good channel. That's it. I'm not a shill or anything like that. I've never met the man before. There's no money wise or anything like that being exchanged. But if you guys like this kind of stuff, want to see more, maybe more details on this box, how I kind of made it, how it got set up or anything else like gear wise, because all this stuff is coming up in videos here real soon. If you guys like that kind of stuff, definitely hit like, subscribe. Also comment. What's your Faraday cage set up? How do you have things set up? Do you suggest anything else that I could probably do to make this setup better? Maybe you have a better setup yourself. So if you guys, like I said, like this kind of stuff, like, subscribe, consider Patreon, more behind the scenes stuff, other stuff like that, and it'll assist the channel a lot. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you all have a great day.